choose to make a positive impact. Lead SA. Give some respect to a very young lady who has done so much for her community and keeps doing it. She's in the studio with me right now. She literally just got back last night and she came straight to 947 to share with us her journey and what she went through when she was literally climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Wow, that is a lot. Serena, how are you? I'm good, thanks. And you? I'm thank good, you thank you. Me. Thank you for coming through. <laughs> I thought you'd probably like sleep the whole day and just relax your body and then come back and get back into action again and get back into work. Oh, I'm not done yet, so... Dude, it's only the beginning. It's only the... Let me, let me brag on your behalf. Let me, let me brag <laughs> on your behalf. So, according to Statistics South Africa census, there's an estimate of 5.1 million girls between the ages of 10 and 19 across all races in South Africa. And many of these girls make use of disposable sanitary wear, which on a rough estimate costs 50 rand, right? So, a three-year period, girls will spend 1.800 rand on sanitary products. But what about the school girls who cannot afford? So, Sahira Biznath, at just 16 years of age has done something to change this. She has just returned from the hashtag Sweet 16 Summit, a campaign that saw her summit Mount Kilimanjaro with the aim of raising 1.6 million rand for Dignitary Dreams, an organization that provides safe, reliable and reusable sanitary packs for girls who cannot afford to buy their own. Sahira and her team will depart Johannesburg on Monday, 17th July, anxious to wave the South African flag high. Well, obviously you're back. Everything has happened and the experience for you. I mean, at just 16 years old, how did you prepare to climb Mount Kilimanjaro? Um, okay, so the preparation was pretty extensive. Number yeah. one being, um, I was not a fit person at all. So it has been a huge lifestyle change mm. um, from training every single day, getting my eating right, um, no more donuts. I mean, to be honest, that was the first thing I did when I got back. I oh, had a donut. Yes, yeah. I would too. So the preparation has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, family time was now going for afternoon hikes, mm. you know, Sunday morning walks, no sleeping in, just getting it all together. How it's long did it take great. you to complete? How many days was it? Um, we followed the seven day Mashami route. Okay. And wow, it was something else. Was it something else? And did you have else. to set up tents and build so, as you go um, along? We, I had a phenomenal team of yeah. climbers, but the, un, the real unsung heroes are definitely um, my team of porters yeah. and guides. Um, it was There were a total of 42 of them. Jeez. And those guys are exceptional from motivating you, telling you poli poli, which mm. means slowly, go yeah. slowly, to greeting you saying, Hakuna Matata, yeah. you got this. And with 15 kgs on their back and they just ran up that mountain. So they set up the tents, ensured that we had everything. We nice. ate on time. Um, they, our tents were closed so that we didn't freeze. Yeah. So it was incredible. What kept you going in your mind? Who did you keep seeing or what kept motivating you to keep going? Um, going up, were, I just had flashbacks. Mm. It was like a scene out of a movie. Mm. Because the thing that kept me going was... It was for the girls. Yeah. It was for the girls. And um, the pep talks from my mom, the motivational words from everyone around me, mm. the messages before leaving, everything just, you know, kept on coming to me. And that's the one thing that got me going. Trying to remember the real cause. Um, you know, we didn't have a proper shower. Mm. I'm going to say this on radio. We didn't shower for seven days. Mm. And we were deprived of all the basic facilities. And to think that there are so many girls around this world and this is their everyday lives. Yeah. This was just seven days for us. But for them, this is a daily struggle that they have to deal with. Very true. So that kept me going. Beautiful. Just thinking about that. Um, I just read something here. Um, reusable sanitary packs. I didn't know that they had reusable, reusable pads. I didn't know that existed. Um, neither did I. But, yeah. you know, and once I found out about it, I thought, wow. Because what happens when you give a girl uh, re disposable ones? Yeah. They use it and it's done. Whereas um, Dignity Dreams, the NPO that we're supporting, um, they provide, they focus on the education, distributing it, getting to these girls. Mm. Um, it's empowering them, mm. you know. So True. it covers all aspects around menstrual health. Nice. And it sustains them for three years. For you to come up as a 16-year-old, a young lady like yourself, to realize that a lot of the ladies out there that are young don't have what we possibly have is, is quite, it's, it's quite... It's humane and it's dignified and it's also respected uh, across borders because a lot of the times people shy away from talking about Absolutely. it, but you choose to open up about it and it's beautiful and I appreciate you for that. And that is why you are Lead SA's Youth Hero for this month. 
Thank you. This one's for all the girls around this world, all of those that are trying to make a difference because in a world that surround, in a beautiful world that surrounds itself in a madness of its own kind, uh, the only madness that you just have to trust is your own. Thank you. Your family, your community, your country, your responsibility. Be the best citizen you can be. Lead essay.